so i will not so i will not share my screen but i will say what i have done i have i was able is, is to is there a reason ah uh, yes yes why, yes why i'm outside share? i am okay. outside i can't share my screen so i was able to um to one do the vector database to connect the vector database to the llm i was able to produce vector embeddings i used pycon vector database i then produced ai open ai embeddings i also produced cohere ai embeddings reason is open ai was a bit complex compared to cohere ai i also cohere ai is so good so good at similarity search that is why i i also used it compared to open ai it's better um after that i was able to ask a prompt and get answers i got answers i ranked them but the problem is i was getting some vectors in the answers that were empty so i really didn't know what the problem is but i'm working on that after that i used gradio to develop the user ui to for the user to interact with after that i i developed a conversation history module okay kind of a function that stores the history of the user's conversation with the model and then yeah i guess this week i don't plan on shelving this project actually i plan on continuing with it i know i have shelved the rest but this one i plan on continuing with it any free time, time i have uh, on have sunday time. maybe next on okay this I, I sunday the coming sunday I what i'm saying try. what yeah? i'm saying is that you will have another like on this week's project there is rug so okay. do that one okay so okay. there's okay. almost always it's tempting to look back you will okay. have time at the end to but just rest on sundays so okay. that you can be efficient and then continue the work okay. Uh, okay. not okay. really worry about you know like the projects uh, okay. do as much as you can on that in that week okay okay i was also okay 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 so i was also able to do a similarity search on the on the text on the embeddings and the user text the user question to kind of develop a similar a cosine search okay it develops it checks the similarity and gives out prompts according to the similarity yes so basically that was what i was able to do the past week blockers were definitely embedding i had a problem with embedding especially the open ai embeddings it was a bit hard but i pulled through yeah that's all from my side thank you yeah but I, so i haven't heard about us so this is one good good work but i haven't heard about evaluation data and how to check and verify i think that was the essence actually in part it was not the rag part that was the main objective just so okay. that everyone also understands so how much and i know that you it would take so much time to understand every piece um including just simply building a rag but the objective was absolutely beyond that the rag was just as part but more how to validate retrievers you know what are the, the you know looking at verifying generating data to to validate or uh, measure the relevance of the, or choosing the right retriever and then choosing the right argumentation and choosing also and then testing prompts generating prompts to do that so how much of that were you able to do um that i was very little actually i did very little i don't even think i pushed that to github because it is not yet complete it has a bug but um i'm trying i'm trying that's all i can say for now okay good i mean that's where i think one aspect is this issue of usually substitution may happen in a real company and real companies may not like it if people substitute you know what is not given in the task but substitute but i understand i mean it's not a criticism it's just a much more a reminder that when you present you have to present for example in a company that they ask you to do something but you were only you were happy to do the other thing a substituted problem and then 
you should present it by acknowledging that, okay, you know, I was unable to do that because I have to do this, but within the time that I was capable, I was, I was able to do this. And this at least helps you bridge the gap between you, what you were able to do and what the, you know, the kind of the, um, you are asked to do. So it's important to recognize differences. Okay. Okay, but overall, well then, I think uh, I know how much new concepts takes time, so. Abamicho. I think Abamicho is not on the standard. Uh, should we move forward to Mila? Okay, Mila. Okay, good morning, guys. I think I'll be sharing my screen now. Hi, Melat. Sorry. Uh, Hi, you can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sure. Okay, so, so um, maybe you can mute. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, is my screen visible now? It's now, yes. Um, okay, so this is actually the UI event. I built it using Streamlit the python framework for the front end uh what i was trying to do was uh, so that we can browse files pdf files and load data and then uh, we can have a custom you know uh, search uh, a custom rag systems so that's why what, what i was trying to do uh well my code somewhat looks like this uh, i had this evaluation code the uh, the rag component this can you zoom? Can you zoom because it's very small? Oh. Okay. Uh, is it good now? Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was I had structured my code like this. I wanted to do the evaluation in this high uh, in this folder. Uh, the prompts for evaluating data generation prompt, generic evaluation prompt, as I will the picture was showing I, I was trying to do it like him so as for the rock part i had this uh folder for chat uh okay let me start for with the load to chroma so this is where i loaded my data um i was trying to make it dynamic loading the data but i was having trouble loading uh, it from the ui so i just uh, loaded it from this uh, data folder. Uh, I'm sorry, I should probably. Okay, so uh, I first loaded the PDF lo uh, using the Pi PDF loader. After I uh, loaded it, I had to split it within 500 chunk size uh, and then I got the text, so I used the OpenAI embedding to embed this uh, data. So after that, I had to load it to the Chroma DB, and then after that, I returned this retriever, retriever with this uh, key value as in three. So this is what this function does, and when we go to this chat, folder uh it first connects with the open uh with the api with our open ai api key uh i have set it the api key in my environment variables and it returns this chat uh why did i do this okay it returns this uh i don't know why that was there okay it returns this chat instance from the chat 
open AI with the model 3.5 turbo and then what this function does is it accepts user query and then it will return the general text uh, so this is mainly about the rag part of it I also try to show this work inside of the notebook but I've mainly used this to uh, integrated with the rock so okay, let me show you the code with the streamlet so as for the streamlet i was trying to do the sidebar uh, ui as you guys can see from here uh, i was I, I was i was able to load the data to with this dynamically but then i didn't know how to access this uh, retriever this retriever from this uh, from this file so I just loaded it statically uh, so this is the generate output um, function that is supposed to execute when this generate output is clicked uh, what it does is so we also have this evaluate which is currently not working uh, so uh, what it does is, so if I was to type, what is the deadline for the weeks? So it so would we'll return the final submission deadline for this week's challenge is uh, as you guys can see, it returns it from, which is basically the raw concept of it. But I was trying to evaluate it, give, giving it uh, how much accurate it is and stuff. I was following the, uh, this actually is entirely not my code. Um, I basically typed to following uh, the tutor but I didn't really understand it. So it, it, where here is it's loading from my file, which is the context of it. And here is actually the generic evaluation prompt stating how the prompt should look like. And also what I was trying to do from the uh, from this function is Pass this input text, which we enter from, uh, which we enter from this, uh, from from our user and evaluate the prompt. But I was unable to do it. Uh, as for the dynamic prompt generation, I do understand the concept of it and how to generate it, but I couldn't seem to code the, code it uh, it's because i didn't really understand how to basically what i understood from um, generating prompt dynamically is that you were supposed to give it an input and a set of outputs and from that it's supposed to generate dynamically from our data uh, this is what i understood but i couldn't get myself uh, to code it because of the time and i'm not sure so this is it okay great i think that's you know as always the first thing that i encourage people is exactly to talk and you know on your work and well done um and also thanks for letting us know why it didn't um yeah why it didn't work the evaluation and so that's clear so thanks and and keep up this good work and I think, you know, there will be more opportunities now that you have understood drug. You will start implementing another drug. In this case, not you know, the main focus becomes fine tuning as well this week, but uh, you will have this similar chance to, to do whatever it was not, you were not able to do last week um, in the next one. Great. Um, then we have... Um, Abba is having uh, some issues. I think he's ready now. Abamitra, you can speak up.
until Arbamujo is ready, then Lillian, you can go with uh, yeah, without a presentation. If you want to, if you share it, we can also present it for you. If it's your blog or your coach, but go on. Lilian, you may you may have just joined now. Okay, so maybe that uh, her network is also going up and down. So let's continue until she comes. Abel, Abel Bakala. Hello. Hello, Lilian. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Sorry yeah. for the technical problem. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, last week was um, a bit challenging because it was a completely new concept for me. Uh, but I was trying to read on different kinds of research papers and different kinds of projects uh, built on RAG systems. And I think I have managed to get the concept of the general idea of what RAG is and how to implement it and stuff. Um, while going back to the project, um, at the, the end project I have right now is just a prompt generator. Uh, there is a React app for it. Uh, it, asks, it asks you for your prompts and it gives out uh, different kinds of prompts, other prompts. Uh, I think I've managed to do that, but uh, the tasting part is not just integrated. I have tried to write some codes and play with the notebooks on different kinds of tasting systems. But it has it's not um, included in the project in the front end part. And uh, yeah, this week was generally informative. I've gained different kinds of concepts on what RAG is, how AI works, um, how to to embed documents into um, into an index in like a Victor database and stuff. And I think um, it was a it was a nice challenging week. Thank you. Thanks. But could you tell us also a bit about your challenge, like the challenge that you faced and, you know, what was well, um, the major elements and something? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, one of the biggest challenge I faced was like uh, changing the documents into uh, like into a Victor database and making it readable for like retrievals and, and so on. Uh, because we were supposed to embed it and uh, actually, I I used like Pinecone initially, and then it was challenging, and I went to review it again. And they both have different like kind of um, coding structure, like database structure, uh, API structures, and learning that and understanding that was a bit challenging. That was the most challenging part. And as I said, like uh, the test evaluation also. It had uh, some mathematical mathematical aspects, and uh, yeah, reading into that was a bit challenging. These two were kind of challenging for me. Great. Okay. Thanks. And I think yeah, this is great. And uh, was that suggested or volunteer? If you were volunteer, that's great. If not, thanks for speaking, not being silent. But mm -hmm. also, just I think everyone should compete talking about their work so i think that's uh but thanks for letting us know your work okay thank you uh abel uh, yes uh can you guys please give me three or four minutes sure yeah you can go um whenever you you want so yeah. let's some of you can take the yeah. step now and i'll take on later okay okay good or thank okay. abraham abraham if you are there if not then let's go to meron and then we can back, come back Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's share my screen. Uh, 
Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, I have done my work by using Django for uh, front end and back end. Uh, so this is uh, the function that uh, I was extracted. Uh, I extracted the PDF file. This one, and uh, I changed my PDF file uh, by this function. This this one is a changed size. Uh, and I embedded the chunked file uh, by this function. Then, uh, after embedding, uh, I loaded my chunked and embedded file uh, into a database by Django model. This one. This is a table that uh, that I uh, put, put the PDF file, and this is the next table that uh, I put the chunked and embedded files. Then. Uh, I generate prompt from the Django view dot by files. This is the prompt I generate. Then finally, I this one is a UI that the users uh, the users can put the, uh, their text on this UI and they they get they can get the generated Trumpet on this UI. I think I think there is a confusion. It seems is that is that a prompt or is that just the the data that you pulled from, from the, the, the prompt that, uh, that it is uh, all about uh, prompt. Prompt is put around this, and this one is a chunked. The similar chain kit. Yeah. So, uh, so that means that's it. not. I mean, you can yeah. call everything a prompt, but that is basically a context, which basically this is the context, and this is the prompt, okay. and the, the the final is a user question. So, I mean, so what do you mean now? How do you use this one, like as next? Because in in principle. You are when you say prompt, you're gonna be helping others yeah. to to basically use your generated context or your generated prompt, and then use another context to you know to run and get results. Will the that help them? The context is that related to the user's question and the prompt and the user's question. Yeah. So, I mean, are you answering the question or are you actually no. generating? Yeah. Uh, generate the prompt and the... So, so how, do, how does related, it generate? How does it, so, so where is where is the part that, that says generate prompt? This one is a prompt. Yeah, but so, that's, so that is not to generate prompt. That's to answer, right? Because it's saying, based on the above data, 
given an answer to the following question, restrict yourself to the above data only. And then, so that basically means use that one to answer a question, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not, that's, that is prompt, but not, that is not to generate a prompt. So, I mean, the reason why I'm stressing there is that some people are getting confused about what is a prompt, what is a context, and what is an answer. A prompt is basically, you can call it a function, an AI function that when you use it, it generates something, while an answer is an output result in that function, right? So, and then a context is the argument, an input. So if you wanna think of it that way, a prompt is basically an, a function, we call it normally AI function, while the argument, the input argument is called, uh, for that function, it's called context. And then the output of that function, AI function, the result part of it, is called um, basically an answer, right? So I think what what you generated is just an, an output. By running the prompt, using the input arguments, you get a result, and that result is that one. So this is called just a result, not a prompt. So just out of terminology-wise. Okay. Does, that, does that make sense? Because I, I want you to understand it so that next time as you know this week that you don't have that confusion okay. so, or if you have done that try to convince me and that might help if, okay. if you don't agree and i think it's important if you don't agree to actually uh continue the conversation so that you can understand it better okay, okay. yeah so what, what do you think that is now like based on the code that you wrote is that a prompt or an, a result or uh, what else my understanding is the uh, there is a user's question and I, I embed the user's question and uh, there is that uh, find the similar uh, the similar so, so retry, right? on yeah. their data yeah you retry yeah. yes Yes, retrieve the uh, similar. Yeah. Uh, by similarity, by this function. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, <laughs> did I understand you? Yeah, yeah, go on, continue. I think you were saying, yeah, you there is a user question. You embed and, the user question. Yes, yes there is a user, the user question. I embed the I embedded the user question. And there is a text embedded text. Yeah. Then find the similar embedded text from the database and mm -hmm. uh, take that to the user question and the similar embedded text. Then we 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 can go to the LLM and search. Yeah. So that means you you run your that's called you run your code exactly if in the code analogy yes the, the retrieval component is the input argument yes. then whatever you embed whatever it's a process to generate the input arguments yes. then the prompt itself that you use uh, with the selected the retrieved components the one that is similar with the user equation to put together that part is called a prompt and that one is called function basically in this case okay. then the llm runs that function and gives you a result okay. so so what you what you did is basically you generate a result yeah exactly okay okay, okay. okay. so uh, i will put as a function so you have to generate a function different type when you when you when you say i i want to generate prompts yeah. it means you have to dynamically write the function not run the function but dynamically write a function okay so that means you are trying to create functions that could be run using other arguments other input arguments such that they they become better okay 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 yeah okay okay great and thanks and, and i think yeah continue if you have other things to show uh, uh enough I, I was trying to evaluate uh, uh, 
the product, but uh, I didn't understand what. Thank you. Thank you for. Thanks. Thanks. Great. And I think yeah, the the same that I have given a comment to Yvonne is applies everywhere. Almost always. I mean, in this case, I understand there was a misunderstanding, but it's important to recognize exactly the you know the the different elements and what is asked and what we are able to do so that we can acknowledge earlier you know what what we managed to do um, and acknowledge what was given and then you know why it was unable we were unable to achieve the desired objective but well done um you know, okay and i think i don't know the hand order but i know yaya is also in the list but fanuel last week you promised therefore you can um you can continue and then we go to Yaya and Mubarak. Fanwin? Ah. Then, no, oh, Hi, Abel. So, so um, we have Abel. We, we can go after Mubarak. Abel. Okay. Hi, Fanwin. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for remembering. Uh, I'm not really proud of what I did. I mean, I didn't do what I was expecting to do, but I'll just show you my progress so far. So. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Mm. Okay, can you see it? It's probably coming, yeah. It's coming. Okay. So uh, the first thing I did was, you know, after researching about RAG and uh, how it works, I, what I tried to do was create a RAG of my own using the challenge document provided. So that is the simple thing I did first. So I imported the data, I created embeddings and stored it in Chroma DB and created the retriever and tried out some questions. So it answered, you know, uh, not really satisfying answers, but at least still related to the context. So the next thing I did was trying to create an elevated rag, uh, which which means like you know, trying to customize the rag into providing a more comprehensive comprehensive answers to your questions so the method that i was trying to implement was re-ranking which re-ranking means just uh trying to re-rank the context before you know feeding it to the vector that i was or when retrieving it uh, you know when you try to retrieve like you have to re-rank the context to, uh, to have a better answer about your question so for that like we the, what i was trying to do was find another embedding which in this case was cohere embedding uh which is a paid library but i was trying to use the free one so from launching there is a retriever called bm25 which creates another retriever from the document and also i used cohere embeddings to sort of you know create uh, a combined retrievers from the bm5 the bm25 retriever and also from the chroma db retriever so what it, what it should have done was like combine the two retrievers and uh, choose the best context for the rag and try to answer based on that but unfortunately i had a problem with the cohere library so that's what i stopped there and the next thing that i tried to do was trying to see how ragas works with Langchain, which i did like uh, i followed this provided document in the challenge uh, document and i was trying to you know evaluate my rag based on the by loading the retrievers and creating some questions and creating ground tools using ragas and after that it also combines the context provided the questions and answers and it creates you know an, an evaluation system so th this actually took a lot of time like 10 minutes to create uh, an evaluation for the sample data which i did it was i think 15 from the 24 chunks so after that it came up with this evaluation data so it creates a question then it gives that uh, in raw form to the rag system and it gives us an answer but with using a ground truth prompt 
it creates a ground truth answer for the question in the first place. So it tries to uh, evaluate the answer with the ground truth and gives, you know, if it is a good precision with the context and it also checks for faithfulness, answer relevancy and stuff like that. So what I was trying to do was, as I understand the project, like when the prompt is generated, it will add it to this list of questions and it will provide a ground truth based on that. And after that, it will, you know, evaluate the answers also and gives us this evaluation metrics with using Ragas. That's that's what I understood and what I was trying to do. But unfortunately, I was so, way behind. You know, I on... think I think depending on what, depending on so now the evaluation depends on exactly what you add, right? So mm -hmm. if you were trying to evaluate different prompts using the same question that is you are evaluating the prompts mm -hmm. in this case it seems you are evaluating the the context maybe just how much you know for each question you you, ge you generate context and and given that the, the questions are different and what makes them different as well is the context right and then the, there is a ground truth so in this case most likely you are evaluating both the, the single um, prompt that you have so you're not comparing prompts but you are just evaluating the single prompt and the retriever which is which generates the context but yeah but if you had, if you had for example for the same question uh different prompts then mm -hmm. you are evaluating you are comparing prompts one prompt against the other yeah so like I, I may be wrong but i understood it as like this generated questions in this column so uh in my understanding like i was trying to you know create a prompt like i, I actually created an input prompt based on the input but yeah but after that, prompt, that prompt is everywhere that prompt is just the one that generates data the other yeah. prompt the other prompt is the one that generates the answer so what are you evaluating like in this case, you're not evaluating because you assume the one that generates the data has no issue because that's what you're trying to evaluate. You know, the, the data is generated. So mm -hmm. in your case, you assume there is no error on the data, on the generated data. Therefore, you are not testing at all the data that is generated uh, or the prompt that generates the data. So that one, so you have to understand exactly what is what is being tested. Now, if you have generated the same data frame for a number of prompts, then that is called now the combination of, or let's say you have 10 prompts and then you generated by each prompt using the question and then the, the same retriever, that means the same context, let's imagine you generate answers. Then the variation along that and the variation, for example, on, let's say, on answer relevancy would across just this n number of prompts will measure will rank which prompt is good um, okay so like what is the rank i thought like the ranking was you know what the question or the prompt and the question has an answer but we also generate an answer which is the ground truth in this case and compare yeah. the answers yeah, based on so the context right yeah that's evaluation yeah. so it that's what i understood it from this year you know so you know make it very clear like i think it's confusing a lot of people okay, okay. just so like this is not the from generation the truth, comparing the answer to a ground truth is what ragas do and give you those those metrics so mm -hmm. that's basically but what are you testing with those metrics depends on your intention so in this case you are probably using one prompt that means a prompt is everywhere, therefore, like you have to not get confused. Basically, mm -hmm. the one that generates an answer. Let's call it a mm -hmm. function that takes yes. the question and that takes the, the context and then uses LLM to compute and then gets an answer. Right. So that's a function, one prompt, one function. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that one prompt, that one function is evaluated here, like based on the different questions, because by looking at if you visualize how much of this the answers or let's say answer relevance let's take one how much of it is you know good it gives you 
the strings of the prompt. Yeah, so I think I phrased this wrong. Uh, that that was what I was uh, understanding. Like okay. after we generated the prompt, that prompt has to be tested with this matrix to exactly. you know, exactly. yeah, to bring it up. Like if yes. it is and right if one. you generate another one, then you you test the same. It you test, same. yeah, yeah. So that's the evolution test that has to like. Yeah. You you create more evolution tests and you you know put them against this matrix and the one that, that is at the top based on the user's context will win yes. and you know provide and again in this case it might because you you fixed the context the retriever so in this case you have a uh, you know of course uh, given that you are comparing it's okay because the, the same error context is in every in every you know test therefore it should mm -hmm. be fine cancel it out but okay. if you want to for example evaluate just the context part only you could do the same as well uh, based on changing different contexts instead of different fonts. Does that make sense? Uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, so, but, okay, I think we're doing the same thing with this week, so maybe I'll apply them yes. this week. Probably. But it's, it's good that I think one of the uh, things that I, I am appreciating here is that you moved on and continued to address the objective, even if some things, simple things didn't work. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's... you'll see that in the project, like when I keep going, like, See, like I, I haven't even implemented this in the back end because I had problems, you know, trying to move this into, uh, you know, a method and classes and stuff. So I moved on from that and tried to do what I can, which uh, what I did was created a React front end and fast API back end, which are new concepts for me, both of them, since I'm not a web developer. Uh, they were very new, so I had to you know, try to look up both of them. And, you know, I wasn't successful last week, but I think I did good this week about that. So what I did was created a front end that will communicate with the back end using Axios. So I only created one endpoint, but I only wanted to at least test the ranking system of the prompt. So I tried to implement the uh, Prompt evaluation codes provided by uh, I think it was Fakasta, and it was successful on that. And I created the front end for it, and it also responds with the back end and back and forth. I think let me share that screen, and I will show you. It's a very simple UI, but I think it will do the job for now. Mm. Okay, give me a second, sorry. Uh, can you see my screen? So as I said, it's very simple. So I'll just ask it what I will ask for to challenge. So what this does is like, it will take the prompt and uh, move it to the back end of the system and it will give us the data back and it will show it in a table format. So it might be simple for now, but I found how to use different components in React and how to also communicate with Fast API. So I think that's what I did for this project. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Vanuel. Um, and I think let's just move on. And I think Yaya, do you wanna go? And then after that. Uh, go to Mubarak and then Natanael and then Kerot. All right. Thank you, Abby. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, let me just show what I have and then I will get a feedback. Uh, when, I mean, the, the way that I thought about prompt uh, is that the prompt template that we use for an LLM. So uh, the first thing I uh, did was to get uh, or to construct the directive or the prefix for a prompt template. And for that, uh, I used uh, uh, the prompt data from uh, AgFacing. Uh, so 
uh, that's the database, I mean, the data set name. And then from that uh, data set, there is a column called prompt. So I load uh, that and then we recursively uh, split uh, the, the loaded data and uh, using the checkback embedding, um, I uh, saved it locally using uh, Chroma DB. Uh, that is what this function does. It generates uh, a prompt prefix, not the, the prompt, but the directive uh, for our prompt. And uh, the next uh, function is for getting uh, the, 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 the context, because I don't want to load it again and again. That's why I separate them. So from the, the locally saved uh, vector data store, uh, we get the uh, retriever and then the this function is the one that will uh, generate the the prompt directive not the, the whole prompt just only the uh, prompt directive so for that uh, i wrote some kind of directive to get a directive i, I, I believe uh, using the context this context comes from the half um Hagfish uh, data sheet, right? So that will uh, return uh, the, the the prefix of the uh, the a uh, prompt. So that that's the first step I did. So let me just show that. I, I don't know if I'm on the right way. So this is. Uh, so I want to, uh, for example, like uh, SQL query assistant. This only gives me the, the, the directive. I call it the directive or the, the prefix, right? Once this is done, uh, it takes a little bit of time. I don't know why the reason. Uh, which which part now when you when you when you generate what which part is being executed now come again okay okay so when you generate with that then yeah. it generates so which which function from the one you showed us is that generate context the one uh, that is run by that you mean to get to get this uh yeah. direct yeah when, when you press generate which yeah. code are you running which code is calling you know the callback uh both of them uh, okay. First, it, I will get the the um, what you call it the data set and save it locally. That that's what this function does. And then uh, from the local database, I, I I get the context, the, the, this context, right? And then once I I have the context, I will. Uh, th this is the the next step, right? Adding that okay. context to the user question, I will just uh, I will I will generate the prompt. That that's my prompt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, still, okay. this one. Remember, this is still the 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 prompt directive. It's not the gen the general prompt. I will come to that one. So this gives me this directive, right? Like yeah. prompt when we when we construct a prompt, uh, we. Uh, we give it a, a directive or uh, what, what uh, something that we explain for the LLM to do, right? So having this directive, I will add um, uh, a context or a, a document, right? Uh, so the next step would, would be uh, using this generated prompt uh so sorry uh uh where where was i upload 
Yeah, uh, this one. I, I will, I will, I will upload uh, my data. Uh, currently, I was able to upload or process PDF and uh, text files. Uh, so we do the embedding, and then uh, we pass it to the LLM to uh, uh, the document or uh, question and answer. Uh, that, that's what this does. So if I go to the home, I can browse a data. I remember the since the directive is for SQL. Uh, SQL Query Assistant. Uh, I, I gave it some kind of database schema that we did before uh, during the uh, readers output. Now it gets the context and the, uh, the the prompt is now ready, right? So I can I, I can ask the uh, LLM. Uh, using that prompt to get uh, answers. So if I say, I, I don't know, what are, are the table names in the database, it will, it will return the, the name of the database, etc. It, it, will, it, it will do, um, oh, this, this is giving me the, the query. Uh, uh, it can also give, I don't know, give me for the top, top five or uh, cities with the highest views. It will give me a, <clears throat> uh, okay, why is it not working? It, it was giving me descent. <laughs> uh, you're, you're saying you're saying you're not running the query itself, right? So you're just basically. No, generating. I'm not running. I'm ask, I'm getting the queries back. Yeah. Uh, I, I can add a document also to get. Yeah. No, but it, it's fine. I think out of, I think this is a this is great. I mean, so that means you generate um, like a prompt, a query, and then using that query to then do some work. Yes. So that's good. Okay, great. And were you able so, to evaluate? Um, uh, not yet. Uh, let me let me continue. <laughs> and the, the next the next step is. Uh, to generate similar prompts like this one, this is just uh, the the first the first step to get or uh, to generate multiple prompts, right? So what I did is uh, I, I generate multiple prompts. Uh, I got the the the, the different uh, prompts related to that context but I wasn't able to go further for the automatic rank generation. Uh, but I know the idea how to do it. Uh, I, I don't know, let me just upload first uh, a document so that we can uh, see a different, I don't know what this document is about, but. Okay. Now the, the document and the database, they are all in here. So we, we, we can um, talk to those basically. But the, the, the main objective is to get the best uh, prompt. So to do that, the, the first thing I uh, did was to generate multiple prompts related to, uh, or that will uh, uh, relate the, or get the information from the, the given context. So this time I will say, I don't know, document analyzer and answering 
my questions. So this should give me like three, I, I fix the number, uh, three prompts. And then uh, we have to uh, evaluate and rank them. So these are the uh, three prompts that are related to the uh, given context. So the first one, I want you to act as a document analyzer, I'll probably blah, blah, blah. Right? And it also uh, uh, includes the, the context tag, uh, which is related to this uh, prompt. So uh, the, basically, this is all what, what I what did. What does it mean? What does, what does it mean, the context tag? The, this is... The, the, the context that I'm going to uh, actually, I wasn't trying to get this one. Uh, I wanted the, the output to no, be. No, no, let, let me understand. I mean, so just so that, so are you looking at the actual vector database to generate, to propose your prompts? Uh, uh, it, will it no, analyze uh, all uh, the data? No, at, at this point, this, this was supposed to be a placeholder, but uh, I think, let me just show you. No, it's, it's okay. I think out of time, I think because we are running out of time, it's just I want you only to answer it. That's so it's basically is not doing that. It's just uh, that one is because your prompts are so are these directly generated? So basically, you have a, a context for prompt generation. Is that the case? Uh, no, uh, this this context is the, 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 the vector database itself. So what I was trying to do is the F string, when I put it, I mean, the output format, uh, I want only the, the, the directive. And then with a text saying that uh, you must use the following context, right? And then I want uh, it to be in, a, in curly brackets, uh, okay. with the, the, context, okay, the, the actual good. context, right? Okay, That's, it's the F string thing. I don't want it to print it out, but it does. It's okay, go I used, on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I used escaping character and double brackets, but it, uh, I don't know. But this is this is actually not necessarily because... Uh, oh, I, I think you proceed, I mean, I understand. So it's just like, it's important for the time others to speak. Let's okay. speed it up. Yeah, good. All right. So yeah, uh, basically what I was saying is first to evaluate uh, each of these uh, points based on uh, the ground the, um, truth uh, and then rank them using the Monte Carlo simulation, but I wasn't able to do that. Uh, yeah. Thank you. But Excellent work. So it's good. I think that's part of if you had generated and then evaluated, that would be great. And yeah. but this is yeah uh, almost there um, to to get exactly the services. So you now have the the prompt generation service. Now the data yes. generation service combined, and then basically the ranking service. Then you will be able to complete, and it's almost yeah, it's almost done. Well, well done. Um, this is great. Thank you. Okay, so then Mubarak. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Fine. Uh, let me speed up because the time is running and uh, let me show you the high level uh, part of the project. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, so for the vector database, I use uh, we wait on a, a localized way. So I, I I'm using on a local host, uh, and uh, here is my uh, UI look like. So uh, the user uh, can input uh, its objective and uh, what. 
uh, is his uh, expected output and uh, as a context it will give uh, a file input so based on that uh, when the person uh, presses the sub button uh, first uh, it will wait uh, to the file to be uploaded successfully because uh, for the vector database part it will load the file uh, so if the file is not uploaded correctly uh, this may cause error so after the file is uploaded successfully the code will read this uh, pdf or any file format and convert to a vector database so uh, it puts us here in this directory the uploaded uh, file then based on that uh, as you can see here uh, it starts to generate uh, for each uh, context uh, and uh, also give an accuracy score uh, after finishing this uh, it will uh, how's the accuracy score and as well as also what is your system of generating the prompts are you just asking it's just llm to generate some subset or is, do you use a strategy uh what i uh, what i did is when the person gives the objective uh, it takes this objective and uh, give uh, for the vector data to uh, try uh, to make a similar a similarity search based on this objective and uh, return the context so uh, here okay this uh, function uh, takes that context as you can see here from uh, takes that context and uh, generates the prompts based on this uh, for the prompt generated part uh, i used uh, this prompt.txt uh, to guide uh, for the generation part almost it is uh, similar to what abil uh, did um, just uh, making it to generate uh, a prompt and uh, uh, to get the context dynamically and the challenge what i faced is uh, even though i <clears throat> add on the prompt uh, the text file uh, to focus on the objective and the expected output but the llm will give me for uh, a, a prompt for every context that uh, returned by the rag system that is the challenge i faced so as you can see here even though who are the tutors who was the objective uh correct uh, prompt maybe who are the tutors for this tutorial for uh, from the generated but uh, it, these all are on the context <clears throat> on the generator context that is why it is generating prompts for uh, that any And uh, its course, it uh, each prompt generated uh, uh, from this uh, taking this uh, JSON output, and it scores each uh, prompt, and it will dynamically it change. How does it uh, score? Uh, it scores actually. I used uh, for now the Avils code. Uh, he was giving the question. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm giving the all, already the generate prompt to score it. That is what. How does what, do you have like ground truth and others that are, that uh, are not really? So what is the based on the context? It will uh, score based on the context. Actually, some, some similarity between between the context and the the generate prompt. Yes. Based okay. on the context. And, and if you go to your front end, you know, that's why, like, it's it, it, because it's not really ground truth. You can see something that is unrelated to your objective, which is what is the purpose yeah. of refining whatever has more score, while actually, who are the tutors for this tutorial has a smaller um, score. Yeah, and for uh, some time, uh, like, uh, let's uh, see uh, for this, what is the challenge? It, uh, give me a good accuracy and uh, a good prompt what yeah. is a weekly challenge for yeah, but i think it, you know in principle just when you see that it means something is not really you know 
uh, like the methodology is not is not it needs to be improved because you need to really generate data to score and also right now i think one of the limitations is that you are trying to ask to uh, you assume that the retriever is good and so you are actually then you you are assuming that the retrieval components or the information that is being re retrieved or uh, collected is accurate. Now, I think that is I said, okay and okay. You, know, you could test that one as well with with different uh, retrievers. And once that's done, you are trying to generate prompts that addresses like that in general can answer questions with respect to that objective. And, and then you have to generate actually um, ground truths to check that because otherwise, if you are just now semantic similarity, then, you know, there's basically little information that the score gives you. The score basically is like text similarity, which is the embedding. So you, you really are not testing prompts then, you know, it's um, so there needs to be some an actual data evaluation that needs to go to evaluate the score it takes just simple text similarity already using the same llm you know doesn't make sense mm, yeah. does, that, does that make sense in a way like because you're doing text similarity everywhere and text similarity is not you know doesn't help you to to evaluate a score because the log probability already does that for you and um yeah so it's i think the the part that needs to be improved is just the evaluation, the scoring component. It needs right. to have a I fake see. data that is generated. Yeah, yeah, because I did this issue, to be honest, uh, I'm running out of time. So just to uh, make a score visible, uh, I yeah. used that and I would improve for yeah. the rest. No, good, but the other, the, I mean, the important part, I think the idea is clear. I hope that it's also clear for everyone. It's exactly that, that you collect some information about the objectives expected uh, part, and then you generate, and then you give them the components. So this is basically the automatic prompt generation service. You could also do, I think the same as what um, I think Yaya was showing. The next system is if a user gives a prompt to evaluate that as well and to give them a score. So that would be another service that you could do. But overall, I think this demonstrates exactly the objective of the project, uh, except of course the evaluation. You need, you should have uh, generated the data and that would have completed at least the end-to-end -end part, but well done. Yeah. yeah, one thing that I want to ask and I figure out is, even though uh, we, uh, we instruct the LM to generate this amount of uh, prompts and uh, to be focused on the objective uh, and also anything, but it actually uh, focused on the context, what I understand is, and if the context have like uh, 10 lines and 10 different contexts, uh, it will generate, maybe it will generate 10 questions, even though we said uh, three or five. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what I, so I think that, that's called prompt engineering. So yeah. yeah, refining and controlling, you know, what the LLM gives you is exactly the point. So yeah, no, but that's a good challenge, you know, that's good to know. You know, it's that's why you need to test end to end, including the context generation, including uh, you know, what other mechanisms to use so that you get exactly what you want during prompt generation, automatic prompt generation. Okay. okay. Good. Okay, so then Abel. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Let me show you what I've done. So uh, 
last week's project was trying to uh, generate an automatic prompt and <clears throat> trying to uh, evaluate the prompts and uh, scoring them based on the given test uh, simulation dates. So basically, the first step was trying to create the prompt. Mm -hmm. So I created a class uh, by modifying uh, the code that was given to us. So basically, the prompt generator uses uh, an objective as an input. It uses uh, an object, uh, the number of data, so the number of prompts that you want to generate, along with the objective of the uh, person that uh, he wanted to try, he was trying to achieve, and uh, how the scenario shall, should be. For example, uh, how the question shall be, he will try to instruct it using the front end. So basically, the prompt generator part uh, will accept this as parameters and try to create a similar type of uh, prompts uh, using those contexts. So to do that, uh, we will uh, transfer the context along with the number of tests, the number of uh, outputs we want, and also the actual uh, output that we want. So when we try to create the prompts based on the given uh, input or the given instruction, it will generate prompts like this. So uh, here, as an example, it was nine, uh, it was eight prompts that we want to do. So based on the context, it tried to generate that type of prompts. As you can see, for example, uh, here the question was, uh, I want to know when the interim submission deadline would be, and the prompts basically similar to that. So when, when it, it will ask eight different type of questions, and later on, we will evaluate those questions automatically and try to score which best context is best prompt is based on the ground truth we generated later on. So to do this, we first use RAG to kind of integrate the data or the source data of the company or the enterprise uh, to our RAG system. To do that, we used a uh, pine cone, uh, the a pine cone uh, vector database, and for that uh, we created ways to uh, convert the data from uh, from starting from the what was it Yeah, so to do that, we created a system to kind of convert the data from a PDF to a text file. For that, we converted to using the PyPDF2 uh, by generating a text file so that we can uh, upload it to our vector database. So to do that, we created uh, the metadata along with converting the uh, text to the PDF to the text. After that, we tried to uh, <clears throat> create the index on our uh, pinecon database and try to upload those converted uh, split text by using the lab chain uh, vectorizer or embed embedder uh, so after doing that here as you can see we upload the data to our pinecon databases and here as you can see we have the metadata al along as well and the source also the text that we uh, embedded in our vector database after doing that, as you can see, we uh, we use this uh, to kind of uh, create a similarity search uh, based on our user objective. And uh, we do that by uh, here, as you can see, due on the prompt generation, we accept the user's uh, uh, input or the path the user want to achieve in this specific context. So uh, here, the user inputs uh, his objective, and we transfer that objective as a, a schema search. And uh, we will get an augmented uh, prompt, which means uh, the context will be augment augmented in a way, or we will be specific to the objective that the user want to achieve. So here, as you can see, we uh, created a context based on the user objective. So later on, we will create the prompts as I showed you earlier. After doing that, we uh, create a test data set or a ground objective by using the same context and prompt. So uh, when a user uh, gives our objective to our uh, 
model. It will basically create a ground truth by generating a question and answer, and that will help us evaluate the uh, the system, the prompt later on. So here, as you can see, it will accept the user objective, and uh, we want to know uh, here when we run this data set, it will create a ground truth. For example, let's say this is the assistance answer, which means there is a, this is a ground truth, the wind state, and we see if the a correct answer, and the best uh, prompt is going to be like when the data solution deadline or something like that. So uh, this happens automatically in the backend. So to show you a bit about on, a bit on the backend, I used fast API to use the backend. So on our fast API, as you can see, there is this uh, function called generate. So this function called generate basically uses, uh, works as a orchestrator for the backend, meaning uh, when a user inserts a objective and a scenario along with an output that he wants, the backend will automatically accept those values and create a way to first uh, uh, create the prompt automatically. Then it will uh, execute a scoring based on our test. And to do our test, basically we used here a true skill rating system. And it's basically a minimal rating system and it is a Python uh, library. I used it uh, to basically rate this uh, evaluation. So uh, when this happens, when the user inserts its objective and everything, the evaluation will happen and the backend of the uh, fast API will evaluate the score. And after evaluation the score, it will select the top result uh, with a sufficient true value and return that value to the front end. So to show you how the front end looks like or the, how the whole process uh, happens, so here it is, I, we assume that it is basically a data set of a company. So for example, there, there might be an enterprise with a certain database. It might be a PDF, it might be a database, or any sort of data that they want to achieve or they want to do uh, on a prompt engineering or a prompt service team. So basically that's the whole concept that I achieved here. So after uh, understanding what the page uh, is supposed to be doing, we, will, we can then create a promise. So the thing is, the user shall input a, for example, there is different kind of questions right, that we might, we might ask. For example, we can do this or, uh, so I want to know about this with computers. This is the question that I want to ask for the uh, user. So then I want to be, the output should be like this. So I want the output to end with a question mark and yep, so that's the, how the, the one the, the thing that I want to do. So next, uh, I want to show how the scenario should, should look like. So I want each question to, to end with a question mark, might be a scenario that I want, or I want it to be in double quotes on left. Yeah. So that's basically what we are uh, trying to instruct the uh, prompt here. So when we try to generate the prompt, it will uh, show what's generating in the back end. What happens is, so it will uh, accept the input value and it will run, uh, as you can see, it will create the, the <coughs> tutors, the questions basically here, and it will uh, create the uh, evaluation methods. And here, as you can see, it will, uh, based on the test, the, the test uh, algorithm here, so as you saw, uh, it will try to rate uh, along each prompt and it will find the most accurate prompts of the generated ones. It will, it will return that prompt to the user and it will show its score. So one thing I want to add was uh, a prompt, a, a testing evaluation method. So for example, the user might want to use the true skill or the uh, Monte Carlo in the, So if you have, if we had had the different multiple methods of testing, I, want, I wanted to add this to add it, it in this front end so that the user can select the testing mechanism, but I hadn't had at the time to integrate that, but that's the one thing I want to add more. And apart from that, uh, it, they can usually uh, directly use this prompt for the chatbot, meaning they can proceed and use it uh, to communicate with the LLM and uh, get back and forth answers using this specific prompt, as you can see here.
So basically, that's what I've done for this week. Excellent. It's really good. It's that exactly that component is what we are. Um, yeah. Well then. Um, hopefully, this will in this week you'll also be able to continue other services. But this is excellent. Um, okay, so it's very, 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 very late, um, and we still have to go through the this week's challenge. Uh, Rudolf and Nat Nail, uh, maybe tomorrow, like in the stand up, where you would give us, you would um, give us the presentation. But for now, I'm not sure if we, you know. How much, how are people tired? If you are very tired, I can give you five minutes and then we can continue to the challenge document or we can just finish it along the way. And if there are questions, I might also come later to ask some questions as to explain more on the challenge document. Should we continue or should we stop for five minutes? Okay, it seems continue, not there's no down okay so let's just uh, continue i know it's um... we'll need to end the call for attendance purposes so we'll have to join again next time okay. you can stay and then we can di directly continue um this way so that i will try to take small time here and explain further other time uh, later in the afternoon we can stop now, okay. 